So we're back. We're back. Anyways, ah, uh, yeah. Remember? We drilled it like this, right? And then we drilled it down. So now this side of the bearing right here has oil pressure. What a concept, right? And uh, <clears throat> as you can tell, these are the ones that were on the 2234 that I had the, the Hover mods, the HVX mods, oil mods. Um, this is the probably the one that I would recommend. Everything else is pretty much choose your poison. You know, rocker mods, the 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 tappets or lifter mods that you cut three uh, grooves on them. Those are all optional. <clears throat> I would definitely do this one and, you know, maybe stop right there. Because look, this is about 65,000 miles. Look, they're like brand new. The thrusts are like brand new. Okay, I mean, look, there's no wear. <laughs> there's very little to no wear. I mean, look. Okay, I'm actually going to do the groove on this one. That's why I've got all these marks, because I'm going to do a groove right there so that this bearing gets pressurized on this side. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's look at similar mileage. No Hoover miles. Or uh, Hoover miles. <laughs> No uh, HVX uh, Hoover mods on these bearings, okay? This was on the 1904 CC. It's got about, also about 65,000, somewhere around there. Look. Oh, and they're the same brand. Um, same brand of, uh, of uh, you know, that brand. I, I, I can never say that, huh? It's Mahale. Yeah, whatever. Um. I mean, look, they're worn. I mean, they're really worn and they're pitted. I mean, look, okay. This side right here, the thrust is almost gone. This side is actually, it's, I think it's still there, but this one's like gone. I mean, but look, see? So that's the reason I am doing this, you know, drilling this way and then drilling that way because that'll pressurize this bearing more oil, less wear. This one I'm also gonna pressurize so that there is less wear. Because I mean, look, yikes. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, I'm gonna just get do this. I'm not gonna show you this because it's, I'm sure you can figure it out. I'm just gonna make a groove that goes around like that, and another groove right here that goes around like that, and basically, you know, sends pressure through the back to this bearing. I'll show you the end product. The end product. But I'm a, yeah. Moving on. All right, so I just finished it. Just seeing if it lines up. And it does. So, just goes in there like so. There we go. She's in there. And I just wanted to see where these are at and make sure they correspond to these edges right here. That's pretty much it. Um, you get some oil back here. These things will last forever. All right, that's it. Let's put the crank together. Ooh, fun parts. All right, so I'm transferring my, my uh, engine uh, to the transmission the thingy studs to the case so I can bolt it up but yeah this one was easy to do just no problem two nuts that's all it took to lock them on this one I had to use three because this thing was on there man and I mean on there and it still is see it, it's moving it's just extremely difficult <sighs> Whew. anyways just so you know, you can use more than two to lock it <laughs> to get them out. Just one of those tips. Oh, this comes with a factory like this, with this thing pressed in here. Uh, my installation with this bolt, and it goes into the case and it, the transmission case, and it locks. Okay, 
it's not gonna work for me so I had to use a hammer and bang 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 and basically do that to get it out my other case doesn't have it either um, it, it looks like it did at one point and somebody pushed it out so I need to do that otherwise I can't even mount it on my engine stand so I can build the engine because it, it just won't work anyways let's uh, put that thing on there and we're here actually to the uh, critical part which is the bearings getting that groove inside of here now these are silver lines I couldn't get the Mahale or whatever the hell that is um, I'm being sarcastic um, so basically what we're trying to do is get a groove like this on the inside okay now when you do that basically what's going to happen is your piston rod bearings are going to have pressure 100% of the time versus like 30-40% of the time and then it's on its own for the whole revolution of 360 degrees you know or actually it gets to two bursts of oil here and here and that's it okay from here on and here on it's on its own all right so that's why they're only good for what 100 horses after that you you're just gonna wear out your rod bearings real quick theoretically speaking of course okay so what I do is I just get a grinder and then I add spacers right here because it just happens to be the right size yeah I get spacers and that you know you know lowers it or, or hires it or whatever so that I'm in the in the very center so basically it goes like that like that and then I just turn it on and go and then on the back like I can't go this way because there's no room right here so I can only go that way or this way so I have to spin the bearing and all that good stuff so you started with it inside don't try to do this because you're gonna ruin the whole face right here <laughs> I could see that happening I'm having trouble actually hitting the button over here There you go. Perfect oil line. Notice it's perfectly centered to that. To that hole. Same thing over here. Perfectly centered. All right. She's good. No, you know what? This one's too too high. I have to do it over right there. I need to go deeper here. There we go. Now she's deep. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All right. That's one. I got to do three more. These I'm just going to put together with some electrical tape. Put them together. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. Because otherwise you can't. Yeah. You don't want to cut your fingers off. Perfect. Okay, that's two. I already went ahead and sanded it with some uh, 400. Okay, this is the two-piece. I use electrical tape to keep it together. So this is very heavy, man. This is uh, steel-backed. Um, this one's like aluminum. See, I know the trick of, you know, buying two silver lines uh, bearings and using this, these dual split... Uh, a steel back ones and not using this one okay the, this one goes you know behind these but it, I would use this kind the splitter kind see I can split them anyways but I had brain for it I thought I ordered two there you go so we're just gonna run it like that who cares so now the main bearing the main big ass I'm gonna have to completely change that uh, orientation so that it, it grinds right where I want it to, right in the center. 
So what my son is doing is basically he he's made sure they all the bearings seated all the way down. And now what he's going to do, actually he's going to install the other one over there. Yeah. Cuz he wants to make sure they go all the way down before we install them on the crank. Yeah, perfect. So what he's going to do now, he's going to grab his Sharpie and he's going to make a line there, there, and over here, and on the opposite sides, so that he knows that when he puts the crank in, the crank actually went into the dowels and is perfectly centered. Okay, so that's going to ensure that he knows that the bearing's seated and, you know, you don't go ahead and close up your case and then it locked up. Well, yeah, it locked up because it didn't go into the pins correctly. So this is just to prevent that. So he's installing the cam bearings for the first time. That's good. Let's put them in there, okay? Yeah. Another double thrust, yeah. The thrust bearing. Is it good? It's good. Let's do it on the other case. Yeah, it's good. All right. So this case already has the other half bearing that's been grooved. So this, we're not going to do anything to it until we put the crank in there. Then we'll go ahead and merge the halves for right now i'm going to put it down on the ground because i don't want to drop that thing and damage it crack it or whatever so so let's go ahead and put those things on the crank oh wait we have to replace all the we're going to go ahead and replace all the bearings on the on the h rods since you know we're here that we were there they're only 30 dollars, so we just got new bearings for the h rods we're uh we're removing the rods. Le estamos quitando el, el árbol de levas. Todas las levas al árbol, al cigüeñal. A little bit of Spanish here and there. Because we're going to replace those uh, bearings with brand new ones. Valeros nuevos para las, las levas de H. Así se les llama esta. H. Porque tienen esta cortada aquí, es un H. So, this is son, son Chevy. En realidad son Buick. Por, las medidas estas son de Buick, pero le ponen Chevy porque son primos hermanos. Son de GM. They're the same thing. They're the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can see some little, little bit of wear right here. Not much. A little bit of wear. But, uh, you know what? It's not that much because you can see the little grooves of the machining when they made this. You can see them all the way down, and it's, it's the wear is very minimal. I could have I could have gone another hundred thousand miles with these bearings, but we got new ones, so we're gonna replace them. Los valeros están buenos, no están ni, ni gasta. Todos se le miran las líneas de fábrica que tienen los valeros aquí adentro. So tiene bien poco desgaste. Ya tienen sesenta mil millas. You know, sixty thousand miles, and very little wear because these things are always under pressure. Están todo el tiempo. Bajo presión de aceite por las líneas que le hicimos a los valeros por dentro. Por eso, por eso no se desgastaron. Si no, yo te ya estuvieran más desgastados. Bueno, siguiendo adelante. We're, good. We're moving ahead. Right, so I got my uh, Mahale. It's a Clevite. Yeah, Clevites. That's actually the exact same that, that, that are on the H rods. So I got the exact same thing again. Uh, Again, these are these are Chevy. These are for Chevy journals, a standard. So we're just gonna replace all of them right now. So he's uh, replacing the bearings with brand new ones on the rods. Okay, so there you go. Okay, 
we do have them marked. They are they're gonna go exactly where they came from. So there you go. He's doing the other half of that rod. We've done two so far. This one's done. We'll put it over there. We still have to do those two. And we'll be done. We'll put it together. We'll use assembly lube. I call it 2050, but you can call it assembly lube. I'm being sarcastic. We got our assembly lube. Like I said, we call it 2050. <laughs> Never had a problem with it. But uh, if you want to spend the extra $30 for a quart, go for it. You have a phone? Yeah. Make sure you set the, the torque wrench to 30. These are these are 516s. Yeah, these are 516s, I believe. These torque to I believe uh, they torque to 26 recommended, but a lot of guys go to 30. So choose your poison. I'm going to 30. So he's gonna set it, he's gonna set the torque wrench to 30. Loctite. It's chilling Loctite because no se me vayan a arrepentir. Yeah? Yeah. Go for it. No, no se puede. Hold on. I got this. I got this. <laughs> Go for it. Alright. And we need, we need both hands. Put your phone. That was one. We just needed both hands. Because it's out of here. Okay, 30 pounds. We did them. Look at that. Good and tight. Brand new bearings. <laughs> okay, yeah. We'll bring you back when it's all done and uh, and ready to go in there. Alright. He's done with this. So, everything went back exactly the way it, it came off. Uh, rods are exactly in the same location. Same orientation. Las levas están exactamente como las quité del cigüeñal. Este, del mismo lado. O sea, no están al revés. Okay, they're not upside down or anything like that. Este, en las motores uh, regulares, tienen una, una marquita aquí, como una, una cosa levantada aquí. Todas esas tienen que apuntar para arriba. Por ejemplo, como si, a ver, como si este es el número 3, este es el número 1, este es el número 2 y este es el número 4. Entonces, la marquita... Tiene que estar apuntando para arriba. La marquita de aquí para arriba. Para arriba. Para arriba. Okay. Así de fácil está. Pero no es necesario. La puedes poner al revés. Y no le va a afectar absolutamente nada. It's not going to change anything. Um, you see those little marks they have right here. It doesn't really matter on the stalkers. If you flip them around or whatever. It's whatever you want to do. It's not, not a big deal. It doesn't affect anything. Um, Alright. We're going to... Put the new bearings on, on here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and slap it on. He's putting on uh, assembly lube. Again, we call it 2050. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, you already added oil in that? Sí. Oh, yeah. We, okay, we got plenty of oil then. And remember how it goes, the orientation? Those forward notches on the, on the side go towards the outside. Yeah, got it too. Okay. All right. That is one. So we'll throw that over there. Now we're gonna turn this around. We're gonna replace this one. So we just used this tool to remove all of this. Usamos esta herramienta para para sacar todos esos candados de anillo. Estos. Okay. Sin esto. El trabajo es casi imposible de quitarle todo lo de aquí. He's adding oil. He already added oil to that one. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to add our new crank stuff, which is this. Um, I already checked the ODs. They are, they are uh, smaller, so they shouldn't be loose, theoretically speaking. So we're going to go ahead and put that on. We're going to heat it up. And we're going to slide it on right here. 
already checked, like I said, the ODs. See, this is the old one, and I can almost get it in into the first ring. This ring right here. This ring. Um, this one, it just goes gunk, 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 gunk. It doesn't, it doesn't go in. So this, they did send me a smaller kit that has a smaller OD, and I thank them a lot for doing a great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. These, uh, so this, this new kit uh, was like thirty-five dollars for a new, new ring, uh, actually a gear set. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna heat it up with this guy, and we're gonna throw it in, way in. So we're just gonna heat it up. Estamos calentando para que se expande. No vayas a calentar el, el crank. El cigüeña no lo calientes. Ahí voy para allá con la, con la Para del otro lado. Ok. Resbálala. Asegura de agarrar el candado. No está caliente todavía. Vamos a calentarla más. Bueno, ya agarran la idea. Se calienta y se resbala para adentro. Sometimes you gotta. Se tiene que hacer en la estufa porque obviamente allá no se puede. Yeah. Go for it. Antes de que te enfríe. If you had some pinches, need to ayudarle. Ahí está. No la podíamos meter porque esta sí está más chiquita del del engrane. Um, we couldn't get it in. We had to really get it hot, and um, it took us a while to be able to slide it in. It's okay. So they did send me a smaller OD because yeah, that thing was loose. Remember? On this crank, it was loose. Now it's gonna be super tight because we couldn't get it in. Woo! Uh, all right, so we're gonna do the other one. The other one is uh, brass, so that one should be able to slide in easier, so we don't have to be in the kitchen. Let's go back up to the garage. ¿Hasta dónde vas acá? Sí, hasta que termina. Pero mira, esa cortada entra con el este de aquí. Oh, okay. ¿Sí ves? Yeah. Quitas agarrarla así, mira, de esta manera. Si no, 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 no vas a poder. Es puro batallarle aquí, ¿verdad? Ahí está. Ahí están, miren. Ahí quedó. Ok. Ahora vamos a poner, no, ahora va la engrane de, de brass. Sí, sí. Ese merito. Okay. Creo que ese no tiene dirección. Ese no más. Looks the same on both sides. So, as long lados. as this goes in there. Sí. No, no entra, ¿verdad? Mm. Ok. Ese entraba y salía bien fácil de aquí, el, el otro. Uh, oh, está? Yeah. Este estaba bien flojo de aquí. Entraba y salía. This one was the one that was super loose. So you just go in and out, in and out. Like with my hands, I could probably put it in if I wanted to. See? See that? Yeah, bad. But that one won't go in. It won't go in. That's good. So that one we have to heat up again. Okay, she's all yours. So she's pretty tight, huh? Yep. As long as you get it close to that okay. lock. You should be okay. It's not even going okay, so we might have to heat it up more. Okay, pull it up. 
So, we're gonna have to do the same thing. Vamos a tener que hacer lo mismo. Calentarlo allá en la estufa. So we figured what's going on. This thing is hot because of this. We got it so hot to get it in because we couldn't get it in. And um, it heated up the whole nose. So it's this thing is it's hot. It, it'll burn me. So we're going to let this thing cool down again. And we'll be back to put that on again. So that's what we're going to do. So estoy usando hielos. I'm just using ice cubes to cool down the nose because it's, it's freaking hot. Ice cubes. Anyways, we'll bring you back when we've got that ring done. Ya los traigo para atrás, pero ya le pongo el otro engrane. Alright, so that thing also went in super duper tight. I'm like, I don't know how the hell I'm going to take it off. Next time I have to take it off. <laughs> Remember, these were loose. These were loose, and now they're super duper tight. Okay, we're good. Thank you, Carcraft. Yeah, they're the ones that sent me that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the ring on. And that should be the end for this crap. And then just the little bearing and all the other little knickknacks that go here. And that's it. We can put it on. So, poner el clip. He's going to try to put the lock clip for this whole thing. Oh, shit. That's still hot. Yeah, be careful with that. Um, it's not easy. No es fácil poner eso. So, bueno, I los traigo para atrás cuando llega terminado. So, we kind of gave up on, on this one, on the new one. Because it doesn't have those little locations where those pliers can hook up to. And that one does. See? He got it in already. He can even do that. You got to jump it to the other side. That's the phone part. You got to open it a lot. Mm -hmm. Try to do it without burning myself. Mm -hmm. We got the neighbors burning rubber. Yeah, they're like having fun. We're not. Okay. Anyways, we'll bring you back. He's uh, he's gonna oil the last bearing. <laughs> okay. Now you're gonna fit this. Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> I, I want to say it was. This no, way. it actually goes that way. Yeah, yeah it goes this way. Right? Goes that way, and then the lock holds it in. Okay, so the crank is pretty much done. We're gonna put it in there, but before we forget, you know, just put in the spacer for the for the sand seal uh, okay. serpentine system. Yeah, right there. It slides right in there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and move that over. So we are lubing the center bearing. Okay, so we can put the rotating assembly in. Yeah, I think so. So now he's gonna spin the bearings until they fall into their uh, uh, location. Levantala, hey. So you can spin it until it, those marks are, are going to help you, remember? Yeah. That's why we want those marks. He's going to align those marks. Okay, that one's in. Now this one has to go in and this one has to go in. It's still not there. Need to spin a little bit more. Para abajo. This one. There you go. Like right around there. Now do that one. Right around there, but I think this one's still not in. No, it's not. So that's the fun part. We're gonna go ahead and line that, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so we've confirmed it's down all the way in to the dowels. See, same thing. And I go around, same thing. It's all the way down. That's why you mark your bearings. Because you don't want to screw up right here. It's in. It's in. Okay. So my son's using the Indian head uh, sealer. Been using it since I, since I was 15. Okay. So it's always worked for me. There's this other sealer. Uh, I forgot what it's. Coral or something like that. It turned out 
in the long run that thing is corrosive very corrosive so I'm like I am not going there I'm just gonna going with the true and, and tested way of doing it so we'll put the distributor drive later on because uh I don't know what distributor we're gonna run so and I want to put the the distributor actually keyed to a certain location so it looks uh, better you know you don't have wires visible and stuff all right so we got the clothes we, we got the halves together we're gonna go ahead and torque these and see if we still spin if we still spin we're still okay if we're not we're gonna have to take it apart again uh, vamos a poner las tuercas aquí arriba y apretarlas a, a su medida y si da todo vuelta todavía todo todo está bien si hay un problema vamos a tener que abrirlo pero no creo que pase nada vamos a poner las tuercas Okay, we've got the whole short block together. It spins really easy, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Everything's perfect. Um, this stud, I didn't know, I didn't realize, but we need to take this stud out because this is where a long bolt goes in, so it can attach my intake manifold and attach it to here. See, like right now, there's no room for the uh, hook that the intake manifold has, so we're gonna take that out. The whole stud. So the solution was to get the welder and weld that thing to the stud, the bolt to the stud so we can pull it out. Oh perfect, thank you. That should work. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Um, that is perfect. We're gonna pull it out now. All right. So <laughs> that's why we're taking that stud out, because I have a very long bolt that goes here with spacers and everything, so that the manifold, the intake manifold for the single carburetor, will bolt up right here. So we just welded the damn nut to the stud. Otherwise, you'll never get it out. All right, we're good. So we're just gonna leave this blank. We're not gonna put anything there until we put the manifold in. There you go. So we're done. Okay, this is as far as we got this week. So we're gonna uh, put this away for the week and uh, we'll start working on it uh, next week. So I hope you like the video. Ahí los guacho. Adios muchachos, adios muchachas.